we are about to attempt to sail to one of the world's most remote reefs. The problem is that the weather is extremely unstable at the moment, but we are running out of time. At this point, I'm not even sure we're going to make it to an urban reef. It's a very strange thing to anchor in the middle of the Pacific Ocean without any land in sight. But that's exactly what you can do at the Minerva Reefs. There are two atolls created by underwater volcanoes and you have to cross a treacherous ocean to get there. I haven't slept much because you can't really sleep with this much noise and this much movement. But because so few people sail there, the coral and the environment is supposed to be breathtaking. So, I'm actually a little bit nervous about this trip. The last time we sailed across this ocean, we met an unforgiving sea. For five days, we were bashing against the wind and the waves. It was rough. Finally, it calmed down and the team can enjoy it. And that's what I'm most afraid of. I'm afraid that if we meet the same conditions, the team won't see how beautiful sailing can be. Because to me, sailing is so beautiful. Sailing is freedom. You can go wherever you want. You don't have to depend on anything. We make electricity and water. We can fish our food. We just need wind to move. It's just beautiful. And I want the crew to leave this boat and think, wow, sailing is something special. You can just disconnect for a moment and just be. I just want them to see that. So I'm just uh, going up to talk to this guy. He's uh, really good with the weather. He's been sailing to Tonga several times, but they actually just turned around because the weather looked too bad. So I'm going to have a little chat with him to see if it's safe for us to go and what we should look out for. We're about to head to Tonga and Minerva Reef. Mm -hmm. Is it anything specific about the weather that we should know about before going there? Yeah, uh, the weather windows come by about every uh, two, three weeks uh, on average. And what we're looking for is a, a low pressure system uh, to pass over us. The low pressure systems uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's going clockwise. So on the back of that, that clockwise wind pattern is coming from the south and will blow us north uh, towards Tonga. Following behind that low pressure system, we are hoping to have a situation where there's a high pressure and it's turning in the opposite direction. So with the two of them, we have a very strong motive force to blow us north. Ideally, you wouldn't cross over a, a trough. Uh, and that's why we didn't leave uh, today or tomorrow, because we saw a low pressure trough uh, in the last two days of the voyage. So are we idiots for leaving today? If you had a big boat that's well proven, there's the big bad boat rule, the BBB rule, <laughs> where you just go, you know, and you weather it. And we always say uh, we could do it, but it would be too adventurous. And we yeah. do this for fun. So that's kind of the final litmus test on whether, you know, go, no go. Will it be fun voyage or not? So. Yeah. Yeah, just the only thing you control on departure is whether you leave or not. So. Okay, well, thank you so much for all the information. That's nice super helpful. Nice you with you. Good luck. With a sort of plan regarding the weather, we had to start prepping the boat for departure. This means repairing sails, provisioning, fixing boat issues, and cleaning the boat. I know we have to clean the boat today, and you hate cleaning, but. What if I told you I spent all night making this sick ass cleaning song? Hold on. What? <laughs> oh my god, I wonder what it's gonna be. Alright guys, this is like super popular in Norway at the moment. Just listen to this. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Anyway, after a long day of boat prepping and weather planning, we finally got the boat and crew ready to head off. So I'm uh, out here, it's the first day out. Uh, it's been a little bit rough in the beginning. We had to go south, like straight into the waves and wind to get out of here. Uh, but now I turn up north, going a bit more northeasterly, and we have the winds and waves behind us, so that's a lot more comfortable. Uh, I was a bit worried about this, but for now it's actually pretty chill, so uh, fingers crossed that it's gonna last. How's everybody feeling? <laughs> uh, better than yesterday. What are your biggest concerns for this? Feeling sick? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that, oh, I mean, like, bad weather, all that shit, but mainly it's feeling sick part. That hasn't changed. Okay, do you want to go on the back screen? Do you want to tell us when it is for you? I'm doing great. <laughs> Definitely feeling sick, but hopefully it'll leave my body within the next couple days because I'll be sleeping a lot. We're not having too bad of like weather, so that's really good, even though it's really bouncy. We're gonna make it through. Even if sometimes it's a bit rough out here, you just have to find the small joys in life. Like sitting inside, eating some popcorn, reading a good book, and watching Josh trying to work out outside. I'm basically just filming because I kind of... <laughs> I expect something to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's working a lot of stabilizing muscles, that's for sure. <laughs> it's currently a thunderstorm outside. We are trying to avoid it. Uh, it's pretty nasty. Lily is on shift, so I'm just about to go out to check how she is doing. She's never been in this situation before, so she's a little bit concerned. Over there while we're trying to get through the storm, and it's been exhausting. Easily the hardest shift yet. Um, but yeah, I'm just waiting for it to pass so we can get back on track because we're also going the complete wrong direction. So. Uh, yeah, so it's not looking great. Uh, also, Gerard is down, his <laughs> feeling super sick. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> Physically, this is how it is. Uh, this was not forecasted, but you never know when they go out there. You, if you're lucky, the 48 hour forecast is decent. It was not this time. Uh, so this is going to be exciting. It's still somewhere between 3 and 11 days <laughs> until <laughs> we get there, depending on our speed. We are three days into our sail to Minerva Reef. Um, I have not filmed much because it's been a very rough sail and it's been a lot of movement and to be honest when it's like that you just feel sick all the time and tired and you, it's like you're in and out so it's been pretty loud pretty bumpy um, honestly I'm surprised the boats held up through all this uh, we haven't had any major damage so far uh, but it's definitely pretty suboptimal conditions um, to the point that we've considered turning around a couple times. Haven't slept much because the um, you don't you can't really sleep with this much noise and this much movement. And uh, gotten over most of the seasickness, which is good. So that process is going well. But yeah, let's show you a little bit about what's going on here. All right, welcome to the helm. Ah. It's very bumpy, as you can see. You can see there's water all over the screen because waves keep splashing up onto everything here, which is really wild. This is, this is rough. I make the same meal every time as my dinner. Vegetables, which we fry up some cabbage, carrots and onions. We got meat and then we're gonna have some mashed potatoes. 
and some sort of vegan meat as well. What's different about cooking on the boat versus at home? The main stressor is pans sliding off of the element. Um, if I'm not standing here and if I just let them go within probably one minute, both these pans would be on the ground. <coughs> All the food on the ground, it's happened before. And this is one of those situations. <laughs> yeah, so you really want to spread your legs wide? <laughs> just be in it. Right here. Just really get in there. Hug your hips to the element. <laughs> One nice thing is you don't actually have to move the food because the boat does it for you. <laughs> oh, that just happened? <laughs> yeah, this yes. is uh, part of the game. Yeah, and it's, it's been a uh, four person job cooking so far today. So, rain or shine, wavy or not wavy, I don't fuck around, all right? We're gonna eat, we're gonna eat. And uh, today we got mashed potatoes, vegan meat scramble. I don't know what kind of meat this is, maybe pork shoulder, maybe lamb. Vegetables with roasted uh, peanuts. Let's see. Bam, look at that. All in motion. All in motion. Woo! It's in the motion of the ocean. <laughs> We're hoping to be there by now. This trip is starting to look more and more like my last trip across this ocean. We got super strong winds, uh, but we're going straight into them, so we're not really getting a lot of speed. We also have to reef the sails a lot, so all that wind is just passing us by. The waves are bashing us from the front, slowing us down drastically and making this trip very uncomfortable. I think the crew is regretting in starting this journey. Usually, I'm the one with energy keeping morale up because I don't get seasick. But this time, I got the flu or whatever it is. So I'm feeling very low. We don't see Lily outside of her shifts. She's uh, down with seasickness. Doc got both the flu and the seasickness and has been completely out since we started. Monica and Josh are luckily starting to feel a lot better. So that's at least something that helps a lot. We can't really sleep. There's so much movement, so much noise. It's hard to rest properly. At this point, I'm not even sure we're gonna make it to another reef. We might just have to keep going. Another five days. I'm just, I'm just so tired. 